Diamonds are forever. Gosh, I'll never make it as a singer. I better stick to pattern work. Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, usually called Glenda the Good Stitch. In this short mini-series, we are on video number three on hip shapes. And today's video is all about the diamond-shaped hip person. So, maybe you're this person. Let's take a look at a couple of photographs and see if you qualify. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is the lady in the black leotards. And if you take a look at the center photograph of her back, her arms are away from her body, you can really see how small her waist is. She actually has a 28 inch waist. And then you can see the side angle just sloping and sliding out to those fuller hips. And her hips are, she told me 40 and a half inches, but let's just call it 41. There is a 13 inch differential between her waist and her low hip. And anytime you get over 10 inches, you're falling into the category of being diamond shaped. Sometimes you hear it referred to as pear shape, but I've always called it diamond shape. Her waist, as I said, was 28. Her high hip is 38 and her low hip is 40 and a half to 41, depending on where she measures. And you know, one of the hardest measurements to take in uh, uh, evaluating what hip shape you are when you're a diamond shape is the high hip measurement. And it's because your waist is so small in relationship to quite a full low hip that it's kind of like, well, where do I put this for my high hip measurement? And it is a tough one. I've had, oh gosh, at least four different students in my retreats and workshops who have been diamond shaped. And it really is a challenge. Where do you decide is going to be your actual high hip location? And so one of these gals, she actually took a stable waist, um, a stable belt and put it around her waist and then, or excuse me, and put it around her high hip and then she measured just above the belt. And I think she said it was just kind of on these hip bones that, that stick out. But wherever it is, you do definitely need to measure from your waist circumference and level down to wherever you decide is going to be that high hip. And then when you've got that done, and of course your pattern all drawn off, you absolutely must do a test fit in a, in a, you know, a test garment because you're never going to be exactly sure that you've got the slope of that side seam perfectly correct for you unless you do a test garment. So that's really important. All right, the other lady who contributed photographs for a diamond shape is wearing the pink pants and we'll take a quick look at them. Now this lady's measurements are 37 in her waist, 47 in her high hip at approximately three inches down and then her low hip is 53 at about eight and a half to nine inches down. So those are the measurements that I'm going to use today. Please make sure that you've got your instruction books. If you're already an existing SureFit Design student, uh, have your instruction books handy. Uh, the pant kit, we're going to be referencing page eight where there's hip shapes given to you and specifically step number six where we have to shift the tracing vellum up or down. And then in the dress kit instruction book, when we come to drawing off the skirt pattern, on page nine on the right hand column you're going to see information on the diamond shaped tip person so if you've got your instruction books pull them out and follow along i've got a tracing vellum already up on top of the master pattern to draw the diamond shaped tip person and i've already done a little bit of pre-drawing like i did in the last video so let me just go over it. Number one, make sure you put in your straight of grain exactly the same length as the grain line marking on the master pattern. And then unlike um, our heart-shaped hip person, which was last week's video, we had a very short back crotch 
This lady's back crotch is 17 inches long. So as we're looking at this crotch grid, I come up, I find the number 17, and I follow it down the angle and slope of the grid. And then I find her waist measurement, which is 37. And then I'm going to follow it up. And where those two lines intersect, I make my starting dot. And then coming down into the back crotch, crotch point number one, she is, uh, you use your low hip measurement and that was 53 for her and the 53 out at crotch point extension number two. And then of course we take the designing stylus and in this case I'll just show you how to do this because there's quite a drop be be, um, from the edge of the designing stylus down to her crotch point number two. So you take arrowhead number one match to back crotch point number one and put that arrowhead into the first dot that says back crotch point number one and then pivot or tilt into your personalized waist point and then from here I've got to get down to this point. So you do a little bit of pivoting, sliding and tilting. You come down, you pivot and slide. I'm bumping up against my little pin there until I can connect down and then finish off the drawing. What your goal is here is to get as smooth of an extension and curvature as possible in that crotch line. And then the inseam is done. Here's the designing stylus. There's the curvy edge. Just flip it over and there's the inseam curvature right there. The waistline is done. Again, we have to establish the side waist point. So that's 17 down for her back crotch length and 37 up where those two intersect. Just make your dot and then use the slightly curved line on the designing stylus to connect together and whatever crotch length you were, in this case 17, the letter that is beside that is the letter F. So I mark that in and use the straight edges on the stylus to connect up to the two parallel lines. And if you listen to the last video, one of the things I said about darts is that they can be longer or shorter or stitched in a convex or concave curve. This is just your initial starting dart. Okay, so now what we need to do is measure on the pattern the lengths on her body. She told me that from her waist to her high hip was about three inches long, so there's my three inch level. And she said that she was about eight and a half to nine for her low hip level. So I'll just mark that. And these are of course done in the erasable pencil so that they can be erased afterward. So the next thing that we're going to do is now shift this red line down to the series of dots here that says high hip measurement. And in your pant kit instruction book, I'm referencing now step number six on page eight. So I'm going to release the tracing vellum and, oops, I've got a pin right there. And again, please make sure you are doing all of your drawing in pencil and you are drawing on your table surface, not this vertical wall that I'm on. Okay, her high hip is 47, so I just need to get this red line pointing towards her 47 dot. And in doing that, again, I've got my straight of grain lined up right on the straight of grain marking right here. So now I know that this is aiming right across towards her 47 number. And I'll mark that dot in right there. Now her low hip level is right down here. And this next series of dots says low or full hip measurement and she is 53 inches in her low hip. So that 53 number is up here. Her level got shifted down to here because of having to shift for the high hip. 
So all I'm going to do now is release this tracing vellum and shift back up until I can see that it's aiming. Need to go up just a little bit higher. Again, so much easier when you are working on your table so that you can just shift your vellum up and down. So that's now pointing towards her 53. Okie dokie, so we'll mark that off. And now I'm ready to reposition this on her original back crotch level. And again, when I did that shifting, I kept that straight of grain very, very straight. So now I'm going to go back up to my original starting point here. And this is very easy to do when you've put that little triangular top on the top of your grain line marking so that you can get repositioned very quickly and easily. So to draw your hip curve, again for those of you who are new watching this demonstration, on the designing stylus, this is a, what we call the key to the system. It has on it all the curves of your body being crotch curves and necklines and hip lines. So it says hip curve right here, but the orientation for the hip line is just the opposite of the back of the pattern. When you're working on the pant front, then the orientation is this direction. But for the pant back, we need to flip it over. So now I need to connect these three dots together. So I'm going to take the stylus and just slide it until I get my best connection going like this. And you can see now that I'm coming down from this narrower waist out to this fuller hip line. And then I'm going to draw in the rest of the hip dots and it is her low hip measurement and you take that all the way around for the, the rest of the leg of the pattern. I've cut the vellum off just for the demonstration here, but you'd be doing this for uh, your full leg on your, for your first test pattern. I always recommend not doing shorts for a test pattern because that doesn't really give you a good view of how the grain line is hanging on your body. So yeah, it's, um, it's a good idea always to make a pair of long pants. Now, there was something else that came to mind that I wanted to say. Oh yes, when you are a diamond shaped tip person, because you have to fit your fullest circumference being your low hip and whatever that number may be, it, and in the directions tell you to use your low hip number for the leg. You may not like the width of the leg afterward because the leg is also graded out according to hip size. That is such an easy thing to fix. After you've got your test pant done, then there is a video on how to narrow the leg down. But one of the things that I have found is that you could likely go down to whatever your high hip dot is. So in this case, her low hip dot is 53, her high hip dot is 47. So after I've done my first test pair, I might be inclined to take this down to the 47 dot just to narrow that leg down. Or another way you can do this is to take a pair of pants, assuming that you've got a pair of pants that you like the leg width of, and measure the total circumference, and then measure just the back and measure just the front, and put those dimensions on the hemline of the pattern, and then just start graduating the, hem, the leg width coming down to the level or the circumference that you would like to have. So that's another way to look at it too. So there you have it. There is a diamond shaped tip person's pant pattern. And you can see that in the last video I did, we did a heart shape where this came way out and then came back in for the heart shape. This is the diamond and you can see that it's flowing onto her body. Now also keep in mind that when I draw this single line, this, what I am drawing is your stitching line. What you need to do now is you need to go back and you need to add seam allowances. This is called a strip down pattern. So in order to cut it out and sew it together, we must add seam allowances. Again, for those of you who are new, 
please use the edge of the slot on the designing stylus that is nearest the outside edge and draw through. And I've done it just in pencil, but I think you can see that there's the 5 8 and you would do that all the way around. And it's also not a bad idea to come back and spot check with a seam gauge or a little ruler and just make sure that in fact what you drew was 5 8 of an inch. Okay, so there's the pants pattern. Let's go on and take a look at the skirt pattern. I've started off the drawing here and I've put in the center back marking, I've put in the straight of grain marking, and I've got the hip dart started. I'll use her same dimensions. We've got a 37 waist. For high hip, I've got 47, and for low hip, I've got 53. And I know you're likely thinking and saying, well, I shifted for the hip level on the pant pattern. Shouldn't I do the same for the skirt pattern? And yes, you absolutely can do that. The reason that I don't is that there is more ease, wearing ease in the skirt pattern, and it usually hangs very comfortably off your hip line. But if you are concerned about where that actual level is, you can by all means shift your vellum up or down and then mark in your respective high hip and low hip dots. And then you will simply connect together. In this case, I just need to do the remaining of the pattern and I went wonky there. Again, you're gonna be drawing in pencil and drawing on a flat surface so you're not going to have those anomalies happening. And then for the hem level, I'm marking in the 53 dot at the bottom. I'll just use my line drafter to continue the connection. And then I'll use the designing stylus to complete the slightly, slightly curved hem that's on the bottom of the skirt. Once again, you're going to need seam allowances on here, and there is a two inch hem level that, or a hem allowance, I should say, that is given on the skirt pattern. So these, the process of drawing this, the, the um, diamond shaped tip pattern, whether it be on a skirt or a pant, and when you get to the front of the skirt, it's the same. When you get to the back of the pant, the front of the pant, sorry, I'm getting confused here, it's the same. So you can see that drawing for a diamond shape is really going to solve that problem that you have in ready to wear, which is getting it to fit properly in your lowest, which is your fullest hip area, and never fitting in the waist. With SureFit Designs, it's always going to fit in the waist because that is your measurement up there. Of course, you're going to be sewing your darts out, which will bring that skirt at the waistline or the pants at the waistline into your body. So, while you're in SureFit Designs browsing around, please make sure that you join our community. My invitation to you, when you do, there are four free gifts to get you started. And usually when you go into the website, surefitdesigns.com, there is a little drop down pop up and that's a, the place for you to join our newsletter and it'll take you directly to the subscription page where you'll get all your gifts. And of course, while you are in YouTube, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have over 300 videos on all kinds of fitting, designing, and sewing. I know there's going to be one for you. Thank you so much for watching.